Welcome back to the channel. I'm Chase and this is All Things Room. Today we're discussing why you should never buy Tag Heuer for anything but half price. Now today we're going to be reviewing a woman's Tag Heuer Carrera, specifically the Mother of Pearl quartz watch now this watch comes in at almost two thousand dollars at 19.5 now honestly this watch used on the used market is under a thousand dollars and through the review we're going to go through and we're going to determine through some pros and cons why this watch is valued at half of what it is i'm going to compare it to another watch that's not similar but offers the same type of you know mother of pearl dial instead of a Swiss quartz movement, it's a Swiss automatic movement, and it comes in at even less than half the price. Now, if you guys are interested in that, let's flip the camera around and dive right into this Tag Heuer review. And here is the Tag Heuer Carrera. Now, specifically, this is the 33 millimeter, and this is the quartz ladies version. High polished stainless steel case. Honestly, this watch looks really, really good. It has a nice three link bracelet, high polished all the way around with a press clasp. Of course, it has solid end links and a screw down case. And this, I think, yes, right there at 100 meters of water resistance on that back case. Now, as we talk about this watch, this mother of pearl dial, we're going to discuss a few things and why I don't think this watch is worth the price point of $1,950. Now, Tag Heuer is a very, very well known watch brand. I'm not denying that. Tag Heuer is very well known. Tag Heuer is just as well known in the public. I would say not just as well known, but I would say with, within the top five when it comes to Swiss watch names and brands to the general public, it's up there with Rolex, right? When I say Tag Heuer, the basic guy on the street is going to know what Tag Heuer is like they're going to know what Rolex is. Rolex, of course, is above Tag Heuer when it comes to recognition, but Tag Heuer also has a lot of recognition. Now, I look at Tag Heuer as a brand sort of like BMW, right? It's high priced for what it is. The name is very well known, but once you drive it off the lot, it's worth significantly less than what you actually paid for it, which is why I'd recommend always going you know, to a gray market dealer, even something like Joma Shop, as opposed to buying brand new from an authorized dealer. Yes, from an authorized dealer, you do get the actual warranty from the company. However, I would rather take a two-year warranty from Joma Shop and pay half as much. The finishing on this watch is quite nice. And one of the things that I really like is the mother of pearl dial. But inside this watch, like I said, it is a simple quartz movement. Now, is that a bad thing? No. Quartz watches are great for a number of things. In fact, quartz watches are great for people who like to wear watches sporadically. People who want to wear watches, you know, once a week or just on special occasions, and you don't have to change the battery except every few years. So you never have to worry about ever going through and readjusting the time. Now, for me specifically, I love automatic watches. I love mechanical watches. I love manual wind. I love chronographs. I just love the idea of a person sitting down, building a watch, and then bringing it to life through that high beat balance wheel that just is like the little heart beating inside. You know, it's just, you know, it's like, would you rather have a mid-engine sports car that has gasoline or a Tesla? I mean, a Tesla is great, but I would rather the roar of the engine and the rumble behind me and that's sort of like how I would compare this to. Now the Mother of Pearl is quite nice on this watch and we'll do some close up shots. And Mother of Pearl is, you know, sort of high end. If you look at something like a Tahitian Mother of Pearl and it is the highest grade pearl, it's gonna cost you a little bit of money. But you know what else has a Mother of Pearl Tahitian Mother of Pearl face? And that is going to be my Nove. This is the watch I'm sort of comparing it to. Right, the Nove also has a very beautiful mother of pearl dial. This is also Swiss made. The difference is, is Nove is not very well known in the watch community or in the general, maybe in the watch community, but generally in the entire overall community of non-watch lovers as Tag Heuer. 
And guess what? It has a Swiss, let me see if I can get it in frame there. It has a Swiss automatic movement. Right there, you can see the little heart beating inside. It has a Swiss automatic movement. So when you think of, well, I want to buy the name Tag Heuer, is it really worth it? Now I was looking at a Tag Heuer myself and actually getting a Tag Heuer I was looking at the Monaco. I really like the Monaco. I'm not really a big fan of the Carrera or the Grand Carrera. I think they're really overpriced. I think the movements that they use, you know, they say the caliber 16 or the caliber six or whatever they say, but really what they are, they're modified, you know, Edda movements or they're modified, you know, Valju. It's just, they're not what they say they are. You know, a lot of watch companies, what they'll do to get around you know, saying it's Etta movement is basically taking the movement and then modifying it and then just saying it's their own caliber. Now, is this deceptive? Yes, it is, but a lot of watch brands do it. Now, for some place like Tag Heuer, I think they need to be like Rolex. And if you're gonna sell a watch for $5,000 or more, or even $3,000. Now, a lot of their quartz watches, their quartz aqua racers will say, as an example, that is $2,000 for a men's watch, right? For a quartz men's watch that has, you know, it's just a basic dive watch. Now their automatics are $1,000 to $1,500 more. Okay, if I'm paying that much for a watch, then I don't want an edit movement. I don't want a modified edit movement. I want you guys to start from the ground up and build your own movement sort of like Rolex does. Now this is not a Rolex. I'm not denying that. And it is a very well-known watch. In fact, that's what you're paying for. So I was able to pick this watch up specifically, which is a $1,950 watch. I was able to pick this watch up for $800 on an estate sale. Is it worth $800? Sure, I would say it is because you are buying the name brand. It does have a really nice mother of pearl. The, the face is done very well. Everything like you'd expect on a high-end Swiss watch because technically, you know, Tag Heuer is not really high-end. If we're really talking in the watch community, Tag Heuer is like a Honda or maybe an Acura. Well, we'll say an Acura. We'll say, you know, a Citizen is a Honda, a Tag Heuer is an Acura, a Rolex is, you know, maybe like a Lexus because you have other watch brands out there that are your Ferraris and Lamborghinis and it's sure not Rolex and it's sure not Tag Heuer. So honestly, if you guys are interested in something like a Tag Heuer, right, there are other, and of course this is no way saying that this, replace this with this. All I'm saying is there are other watch brands out there that use similar things that are Swiss. This is a Mother of Pearl, and Mother of Pearl is gonna be different across the board, right? This is more of a subdued Mother of Pearl. This is more of a brilliant and bright Mother of Pearl. However, they're both Mother of Pearls. This watch comes in at under $700. It's completely Swiss made with a Swiss made movement and it's a men's watch men's watches are generally far more expensive than women's watches and this is a women's watch and this watch cost more than twice as much as this men's diving watch that is also swiss made now what do you guys think now is this a true comparison not really i just wanted to kind of get this out there i got this watch for a short period of time before it moves on and honestly, I'm not a big Tag Heuer fan. I don't think they're really doing anything interesting. The only Tag Heuer I'd ever buy myself is the Monaco, and that's just because it is so unique, and I'd buy the Monaco with the race stripes. That's it. I would never buy any other Tag Heuer. Now I have a buddy who loves Tag Heuer, and honestly, I reviewed his Tag Heuer in the past. You guys can search that in my, in my, in my YouTube channel. I did a couple Tag Heuers, and honestly, when I went to go adjust the date, it just, it kind of like didn't lock in all the way and I just wasn't impressed and he spent $5,400 on that watch and well, you know, don't think it's worth it. Now, what do you guys think about what I said in this video? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment down below. There are gonna be some more high-end watches on this channel to include affordable watches on this channel. The next high-end watch I'm gonna review is a 1970 Omega Speedmaster. Then I'm gonna compare that with the Pagani Design 1701 that I reviewed in one of my last videos. I also have a Cartier women's tank that I have on the desk for review that's also gonna be done. I also have a lot of other things coming down the pipeline. My 
studio is completely full of things that I need to review, so expect a review at least a couple times a week. Now this is my bedroom. I am building out a studio in the other room. It's gonna take some time, so just bear with me. Things are gonna change and adjust as I'm filming these videos, but know that there is gonna be an established YouTube studio in the future. Now, again, if you like videos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below, leave a comment of the content you guys would like to see on this channel. Again, I have a lot of stuff coming up in the future to include a two liter dive tank that arrives today within the next hour. Super excited about that. So make sure you guys are hitting that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop that next video. Until next time.